Okay, I'll start with the first question and we'll go to the room. Uh, Jen, uh, great match today. Just talk us through how you came back, um, you know, in the second half of that match. Yeah, um, I think uh, it was obviously uh, different conditions today. The court was playing a little bit faster, um, maybe a little bit more bouncy. It was way hotter today than it was in the previous days. Um, I think uh, today I came out and was maybe pressing a little bit too much, um, trying to overplay, um, and was making a few unforced errors in the in the beginning of the first set, and then was able to find my way towards the end of the first, but unfortunately it got broken. And then was a little bit frustrated and lost the first set, but um, found my way in the second set, just playing more um, aggressive on my terms. And then um, I think towards the end of the third, I was really just dialed in, um, tunnel vision, and just you know just kept going for my shots and uh, playing aggressive. Okay, we'll go to questions in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Given that was your first third set, uh, three set match, does that sort of give you more confidence, I suppose, with like what what's to come ahead? I, I guess given your preparation was a little interrupted coming into the tournament. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know I think uh, I felt really good out there physically. Um, I could maybe see on the other side of the net, maybe Jess was um, a little bit tired there, and that, that definitely helped me uh, mentally. It just gave me a little bit more confidence, knowing that, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe she's a little bit tired. Now's my chance um, to really step up here and take advantage of that. Okay. Uh, Karen, you. Does making a second, getting at least to the semifinals for the second straight hard court major, um, is that sort of the confidence equivalent of consolidating a break or you know what how, what does that do for you um, did you need to do that to prove anything to yourself about what you did at the US Open or are they separate entities I think they're separate entities uh, but it definitely helps just just helps overall confidence um, just really just knowing that I belong at this level um, I can compete in the second week of Grand Slams consistently and hope to uh, to continue to do that consistently. So I think, um, it, I mean, it, it obviously um, helps me, it benefits me uh, moving forward, definitely. Karen? Yeah. What did you learn in that semi in New York that will be helpful? Uh, I think... I think both of us played a really good match in that semifinal. I think we won match of the year uh, on the women's side, so I, I think that uh, definitely solidifies the fact that we both played an impressive, uh, high-quality tennis match from start to finish. Um, I'm looking to hopefully replicate that in the next round um, tomorrow for my semifinal match. And, uh, yeah, I think just really just going out there knowing that if I just give my best effort, I can be proud of myself and... Um, yeah, just knowing that walking away from the court, if I have no regrets, then, I, then I'll feel good. Okay, Nick, up the back, yeah. How do you take that sense of belonging that you just talked about and also keep the hunger to, now that you've reached this level a couple times in a row, as Karen's mentioning, still want to win that semifinal and have the hunger to, to not only get it in the final, but perhaps win the tournament? Yeah, I think it's just not being too comfortable, not getting complacent. Um, I think once you start to get complacent, then uh, you probably won't succeed uh, week in, week out. You know, you have good weeks, bad weeks, uh, but majority you probably wouldn't. Over the course of five, ten years, you probably wouldn't um, have the success just because you lose that hunger, that drive, the dedication, um, and really just the ro overall uh, – a hunger to win. Um, so I think just, I'm, I'm just, uh, honestly, I'm just happy to be competing, um, you know, with all that's going on, the pandemic. I think all of us are just happy to be out here doing what we love, playing the sport that we enjoy, and um, yeah, just having another opportunity to compete. Okay, just here. Yeah. Um, in your bio, you mentioned that Leighton Hewitt is one of your um, favorite players I mean have you had much to do with him and what sort of qualities I suppose did you like about the way he went about his game um I think when I was younger I enjoyed watching him um I'm not sure if my bio has been updated recently but uh <laughs> I may have just made up a player to be honest with you but um I mean I, I loved watching Leighton Hewitt play um I don't know if he's my favorite player anymore but um I I love watching him play I love watching Kim Kleisters Kim Kleisters was always one that I enjoyed watching um the way she would just slide around the court. Uh, I mean, I think she 
she invented sliding. I was actually talking about that with Jess, Jess Pagula. We were talking about how um, Kim actually, he was the one who really invented the, the sliding on hard court. So um, she was always fun to watch uh, growing up. Okay, Karen? I know it requires a tunnel vision to do what you do, but are you ever able to s take a few steps back and marvel at the era you find yourself playing tennis in where Serena, who may go down as you know the greatest player, w women's player of all time, is a competitor, where you can see Rafa and Djokovic and Federer um, doing their thing. Are you ever able to take that 36,000 feet view of this, you know, bubble that you're in? Um, I think now that you said it, probably not. Um, <laughs> I, I probably will now. Um, but I think, you know, just being in the same in the same draw as Serena is obviously, you know, when she retires, if she retires, it's going to be something that uh, I'll be s extremely grateful for. I mean, I hope she I get to play her before she retires. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, she's the GOAT. She's the greatest of all time, and she definitely will be the greatest of all time. Do you find yourself checking out her score lines when you're going about your day, you know, your off days? Uh, I definitely watch. I try to watch as much tennis as possible. I mean, every single day, whether I'm playing a match or not playing um, on my day off, I'm always, when I'm back in the hotel, I'm always watching matches. Um, I love watching tennis matches. So um, I'm not really paying attention specifically to her, but just to everyone in general. Yeah. Okay, Matt. I'm sorry. I was in another interview, so I apologize if this has been asked before. But when when you were told that you were going to be locked down for 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 two weeks, did you get rid of all your expectations for how you were going to perform in this tournament? Jess said you told her that you thought it might be good for that you thought it might be good for you in some way to get some down to, to get some downtime. Yeah, uh -huh. um, I was uh, I was pretty much going nonstop since uh, since June of last year. Um, I was playing world team tennis and then went played tournaments in the U.S. and then went over to Europe and was training in Europe until uh, December. So um, I didn't have any weeks off and uh, mentally I was feeling a little bit fried, uh, to be honest. So I think um, you know I used that uh, that that two weeks to kind of reset mentally um, and also physically just give myself my mind my body a little bit of a rest and um, yeah I would say I didn't really have high expectations on myself to do well um, I came out of the quarantine and then we we were lucky enough to have a, a separate tournament for for us who were in the hard lockdown so um, you know I play I was lucky to get a couple matches in there before uh, starting here in the Australian Open um, yeah. Tennis nerd, you know, if you're watching a lot of tennis when you're away from tennis, you know, do you, you know, like some players, I guess, you know, like when they're not in playing, they don't watch anything, but do you like really just love the sport, I suppose? Um, I've grown to love it. When I was younger, I used to hate watching tennis. I didn't really enjoy playing either, to be honest. Uh, I would say, you know, as the years go by, I enjoy it more and more. Um, I know Ash Barty is probably one of the, the best uh, who... She knows everything about every every player. Um, she her tennis knowledge is her tennis IQ is in, impeccable. Um, so, I hope to learn a little bit from her as well. But uh, yeah, I would say I I definitely enjoy watching the sport. Okay, Karen. Why did you keep playing tennis if you didn't like it? Uh, I I didn't like to study. I I didn't like school. So I found that out real quick when I went to college. I it was. I was like, okay, studying isn't really for me. I'm not made for a desk job. I, I, I enjoy playing tennis. So it took me, um, you know, to, to get away a little bit from the sport uh, and to realize that, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, about your next opponent, about Carolina. Have you have, yeah, you've only played the one time. What do you sort of see in her game? Um, she's crafty. She, she looks to move forward, um, has an all-court game. Um, she's really athletic. So I think... Um, I mean, I hope it'll be a, a, a good competitive match, um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I think we'll switch online. Okay, first online question, Willie, when you're ready. Congrats, Jen. What were, what were your earliest dreams as far as going deep in major tournaments? 
Uh, I, I didn't really have many dreams, to be honest. Uh, I would say if I did, this would definitely be one of them. Yeah. And and how about now, as far as that kind of um, abstract notion of keeping a dream alive to win a major every time you win on that road to the finals, what is that feeling like? Uh, I'll let you know when it happens. Um, I... Uh... I think, um, you know, I'm not really looking ahead or looking to have those feelings yet. I'm just taking it one match at a time. Okay, Courtney, next question, please. Yep. Jen, I, uh, congratulations. Uh, I was wondering if you could, like, take us back to Beijing 2018 when you first met up with Michael um, and he hopped off the plane and you guys went to the practice courts. I mean, in the conversations that you had then and then you know, in the weeks followed, what was the vision of how your game could change and how ambitious was he in terms of how he expressed to you, like, what he thought you could do? Um, I hate to correct you here, but it was 2019. Um, oh, yeah. What's but, time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> To be honest, I we didn't even talk before. Uh, there was like a middle person who was um, engaging in conversation between the two of us. Uh, so I literally had never said a word to him before we met. Um, so it was extremely awkward once we once we met up in Beijing. But it was uh, I I didn't ask any questions. I I just let him just take over, and I put my trust in him and believe that okay, you know, he's a great coach. He's a good person. I think. Whatever he tells me, I'm just going to do it, and uh, that's that's how we we developed our our relationship, and uh, that's how it's been going ever since. Uh, but I think he's he's given me the structure that I needed um, on the court, off the court. Um, we focus a lot on my serve, which which uh, as I think stats can tell, it's it's improved a lot. It's um, I think. My first serve percentage is higher. I'm winning more more points off my first serve, and um, also on my second serve. So I think that that definitely helps, and uh, that's that's the reason why I'm winning more matches. And then just with you and Serena and Naomi making, you were semifinalists in New York, and now you're semifinalists at the next Hard Court Slam. The three of you together. Uh, what does that say about you and and your game and where it belongs right now? Well, I think it says a lot. Um, they're obviously great, great tennis players, champions um, of the sport. So to to be categorized in in the same group as them, uh, I'll take that as an honor. Um, and uh, I think it's it's a huge achievement for me to make um, the the semifinals here, and I and I look to uh, to make the finals. So we'll see. <laughs> And then last question for me is, um, Shay Suwei was watching your match and was Instagramming about you. Oh, uh, what an honor. <laughs> oh, you just made my day. I can't wait to see it. Let's go. Can you just talk about being, yeah, just being a big fan of hers and what it means to have such a legend be a big fan of you? Yeah. I'm speechless. Um, Sue Wei, I'm honored. I, I, I love Sue Wei. She's, she's awesome. I mean, her personality is, is very strange. She's, she's a character. I think, um, I think people, more people should, should, should watch the sport because of Sue Wei. I mean, the, the way she plays tennis is, is something that you've never seen before. I mean, I've played her several times and it's, it's a pain in the ass. Um, it's not easy. You have to stay focused on every single point because you don't know what Sue Wei is doing. I don't think Sue Wei even knows what she's doing. So um, to know that she was she was watching me, I'll uh, that that's nice. Thanks, Sue Wei. <laughs> Jen, thanks for your time. That concludes our press conference. Thank you.